everyone. Richard Carlton, welcome to another awesome day of oh, FileMaker training. We are having a uh, interesting whoop Monday today. I want to welcome everyone to Monday. So uh, I want to talk about parts of what happened on Friday. For those of you who are here, kind of the inside baseball stuff a little bit, what's going on. So I had a meeting with Claris, and I explained to them that, you know, basically they're working on this like serious kind of revitalization of the platform. And I'm not going to get into technical details because they really don't want me to talk about the technical details, but I think the technical details are kind of already out there anyway. But suffice to say that they are starting to sell their new Claris bundle, Claris platform bundle. And they're working on this new Mongo stuff. But really, and my wife pointed this out because she represents this like different, this like kind of lower group of developers who are kind of like beginner basic people. And like, why should we have to know Mongo? Why are you talking about Mongo? And I said, really, at the end of the day, you don't. The only people that are going to talk about Mongo are the top 10%, the Kyles of the world, the people, the Marks, maybe the Rubens. I'm not picking on anyone specifically. I don't know your skill set off the top of my head. I'm not going to dive deep into Mongo, but if I was 20 or 30, right? You know, maybe early 40s and I wanted to learn a new skill set or even later 40s. It just depends on what your day job is. My day job is managing more than anything else. But um, it would, it'd be an additional skill set to add, like doing API calls. I think this is an important thing. People say, why should I learn Mongo? Like, if I want Mongo, I just go get SQL or something. I said, yeah. And Credit Chris pointed this out. Moyer pointed this out. Claris loved the conversation from a week ago with Chris Moyer. They, they took that video after we cleaned it. I cleaned it up, gave it to them. And they ran around and a bunch of them watched it, bounded executives watched it. But I think that represents Chris's interest and our interest only represents your top kind of tier of developers. Because most people won't need to use Mongo for what they're doing. Someone, one of you emailed and said, why should I care about Mongo? I got 20 users. I might have 50 or 100 users maybe someday. And the access that we do with the public on the public facing side is pretty limited. It's like Ken Tooley doing hot air balloons. Ken doesn't have a hundred thousand people going to sign up to do hot air balloon piloting. <laughs> Not going to ever happen. So he would never have to have this sort of super deep capability, right? Ken Tooley, and Richard Carlton are not Amazon. Amazon has to have this. Because so once again, Mongo is the kind of tech that you could run Amazon on. FileMaker is the kind of tech you can run 1,000 people at the same time on. It doesn't do 10,000 people at the same time. It'll never do 10,000 people at the same time. It's just not that deep. So, And so what we're doing is it's kind of a little bit of an open Q&A, but I wanted to kind of let you know that, that there's a lot of important things happening at Claris. A lot of new things happening. They are starting to sell the Claris platform bundle. That is their future name for it. I wanted to uh, talk about something. A couple of questions had come up recently, um, and I just wanted to hit these up. And this is one of those deals where there's more than one way of solving it. So this is very much an immediate kind of tactical kind of thing. And that is someone said, well, how do you drag and drop a bunch of files and uh, containers and get them in the FileMaker? And uh, so, uh, while well, you could do it with 360. <laughs> okay, so this is one of those little things that is the difference between FileMaker that way. I can't say the F word, and it's not that four letter F word, it's the other four letter F word. I can't say it. If you guys want to say it, you could say the word. It's something, it's a utensil that you would eat with, right? But one prong goes this way and one prong goes this way. This is the FileMaker prong. This dialogue is from the non FileMaker prong. So this is the uh, Claris Pro as opposed to FileMaker Pro. I'm going to say quit and I'm going to make sure I open with this one. There we go, FileMaker Pro. And I'm going to drag and drop this on. Whoop. Okay, that's great. How about you not do that? Where's my little, that one, right there. So this is from the team at DW Fusion, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, uh, Ruben, you get a gold star for that one. So what this is is the ability for you, they built this little sample file and it's, and I'll give you the brain dump on it real quick. You could, do, I'm sure you could do this with monkey bread um, software, and I always like to say, but I can't just tell everyone to solve every f problem with monkey bread because then, then people would expect that I'm getting money from uh, Christian Schmidt, and Christian Schmidt doesn't give money to anyone, right? So just how that works. So in case anyone's wondering about that, so this is a team a team DW Digital Fusion. They're in Australia. It's they've always made these like clutch, wonderful little files, 
And what I was doing is I was like, oh, well, you know, if you come over here and you go over here and you go into like Sevierville, which is where I've got a bunch of, you know, helicopter stuff. Um, I'll just pick one. These are the Ag Air folks, right? So are these all downloaded here locally? Or are they local here? They are local here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this pile of photos right here. You can drag a folder or the individual files. I can even drag the folder here. So they said this would work. I'm going to try this. I'm going to click down here. And then it's going to start processing and it has this little dialogue going. Now I had it, I went through and edited the script a little bit to make it slightly better, right? Um, in retrospect, I'm not even sure it's super necessary. And uh, what you have down here is it's 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 appending these, these are now containers that are filled up. So drag and drop folder, drag, and it works on Windows. So it's not a Mac only thing. That's one of the things with ever, whatever I deal with Christian Schmidt, you got to hold your breath that it works on Windows too, right? Um, but down here are the uh, the pictures. Um, when I visited this place called Ag Air, and they had three Jet Rangers in the hangar, and it was kind of neat. And uh, anyway, so I got some pictures. But uh, one of the things that came back was that I was running into issues. Let me see, script workspace. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an edit here to the file. So this is the file that you can download for free. This is totally free. Um, and what I did is I added a little bit. This section right here is extra Richard code right here. I'm going to comment this out for right now. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run it again. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a new window. So the file, all the containers go into uh, this other table. So you have the screen table. They have the files table. These are all these here. I'm going to say delete all records, delete all 48 records, close the window. So we there's not and they're showing them through a portal here. I mean, it's kind of an unnecessary uh, dog and pony show. So what I want to do is I want to uh, we know this image worked before. I'm going to try this again. OK, it is doing it with thumbnails. So for those of you wondering about this, I don't think my fix and add on is necessary. I was uh, have. Uh, so, for example, if I go to Dropbox here, um, how many folks use Dropbox? Just one of those things that where you get this weird interaction with Dropbox. You can set a file. Like if I go to right here and I right click on us and I say make available, make online only. So you can make a folder online or offline available, which means that these are uh, effectively a shortcut. If I, the files, it, you can't really see it over here, but it's a little cloud. So the file shows up here for Dropbox, but because the file's not actually on your computer, it's not taking drive space, but you can still see it. And if you double click it, there's a little delay. The icon will change while it downloads the file, then it pops it up. There's Chucky, right? Awesome, Chucky. And so, so what happens with FileMaker, at least on the Mac, is that if the file isn't local, but it's an alias somehow, and it's not immediately available, when you grab and put it over here, it will download it and bring it over here to you. Oh, of course, now it's going to work. Um, you can run into a situation where you get the icon only, which is kind of a, a bummer, if that makes sense. So uh, what we end up doing is we tested this earlier, and I don't know, maybe it's Maybe the fact that these were all downloaded recently and then not, who knows, whatever shenanigans go behind, going on behind the scenes. But if you have an aliased file and, and you drag into FileMaker and it can't get to it cleanly immediately, then you can, it'll be, the container will be here, the file will be there, but you'll get that um, thumbnail icon shenanigan action where you get these thumbnails that are not thumbnails, but the little icon of a PDF, you know, with the name. And you can't tell what is this. You can tell eh, it's some sort of helicopter thing or whatever. Right, uh, we come down here to another one. It's a video. I don't want to stick a video in there. Let's just come down here to that's Elemental Drop Zone. This came up as some open Q and A that people were throwing out at us. Um, and then once again from the Claris thing, they've got a lot going on. But but you saw that it just a moment ago. It asked for the login, right? Like if I go back over here and I pop this, I think this is this one here. Or no, it's Claris. That one's fine. It's Claris Pro, right? So uh, let me quit. I don't, I don't want a three copies run. I just only want two copies. Let me go over here. With Claris, the platform, in order for you to even use it, you have to, um, you have to log in, 
right? It's so you're logged in, and so you it talks to their system, and so they actually know who you are. When you get the future version of FileMaker free, right? Uh, or Claris Pro, whatever the, the Pro product is called, Frog Pro Free, whatever the hell, right? Then uh, you're going to have to make sure that you're logged in, right? Uh, with your uh, as a, with a Claris ID or Claris a Claris ID, if that makes sense. And then they know who you are. You're signed in, right? Or it says I I logged in with a studio ID, but they're going to combine the studio ID and the Claris ID. There'll only be one ID, so then you would never see this. It would just go to your favorites or recent or whatever. Does that make sense? So this is the one of the things that people will have to have. You just can't, you know. So to get FileMaker Pro, Pro free, and you have to register with Claris. It makes perfect sense. They're giving you something for free. They're probably going to send you an unlimited amount of marketing spam to buy our stuff, right? Makes perfect sense. Um, so that's one of these like little things that goes on, right? And so, um, so one of the prop, one of the things that's going to come up is that well, I want to build a solution, and with a runtime, like because there's no runtime anymore, but I want to bundle it with the free version of FileMaker and give it away. Well. There's going to be some friction points, some snags on that. We talk about trying to make things friction free. So if your life is full of these little knives and you're always cutting yourself on your hand, trying to like go over the edge of the, the, the solution, you want to remove, you want to sand down all the sharp edges. Well, if you use FileMaker Claris Pro as a runtime, your users are still going to have to sign up with Claris and get that spam email. So their freemium solution, I don't see at the current trajectory how it'll ever be a runtime that will be friction free, right? Makes sense. So we're going to cover various other topics Friday as an upcoming, I guess we could cover this real quick, the upcoming broadcast schedule. So we did confirm with Nick Friday, Friday, Friday is going to be an awesome day. Jacob Taylor will be back. Christian Olson will be there to be talking about 360 works deploy, deploying it with an actual customer. That's where you build the solution locally an updated version of whatever, and then you press the button and it rolls it out to the server and deploys it. And if you are a vertical market person like Scott Kane or someone and you're selling your solution, you come up with a new version, press the button, and then it pushes it out to all the customers for you and you don't have to do all the work. A huge improvement for the platform. A huge improvement to the platform. Like, in a lot of ways, a lot bigger improvement to the platform than anything Claris is working on right now, right? It's one of those kind of things. But Claris has never finished the uh, the uh, serialization of the code. That's his whole idea where it codes it, serializes it, moves it, updates, makes the changes, uploads the data, um, and a lot of improvements. Please, if, if you, I got Jake up here, so if you have an open question right now, you want to throw it out, please feel free. Uh, in terms of the sample file, file right here, go to DW, um, uh, well, it's the, uh, this elemental drop zone is, let me just bring up my Slack real quick, Slack. So it's, uh, this is the link right here. It's elemental.fm. So if you go to here, it's free, totally free without any problems. Let's go here, elemental-fm.com. And this uh, is their drop zone solution right here, which is just really great. So anyway. Okay, I have a hefty question. So I'm going to ask it and then post it slowly because he had to post it in parts. It's from Flint Higginbotham uh, from YouTube. I recently upgraded to FMP version 19.5 mm -hmm. uh, on Mac OS Monterey 12.5. I have recently noticed that when I switch to layout mode, my window seems to prefer going very far down and towards the right. Um, what I mean by that is that when I switch to layout from a short form single list or table, the position seems to start around 6,000 plus down on the layout screen, and I have to use the scroll bar to drag move up. Have any of you all experienced this? Is this a 19.5 issue? Um, do you know of a fix? All right, so back up. So for essential computers yep. where... We want me to take a swing at this, Jacob, before you do? Yeah, go for it. So for essential computers, um, 
I highly recommend that you don't immediately press the upgrade button immediately. I know some of you just can't help yourselves. Mostly it's a function of age. The older that you are, the more you're, the more you've been burned by this, the more you're able to restrain yourself. But this computer over here is like, hey, would you like a new amazing version of uh, Monterey or whatever, right? Keep in mind that when 12.5 came out, I seriously doubt I'm willing to bet a stack of $100 bills that Claris had not fully reviewed it or QA'd their product with it um, before it came out. Um, and so my guess is, is that that is a bug in the product, probably not in the operating system, but a bug in FileMaker, and that it's uh, they've got an issue with that. It could be in, in the application. It could be in 12.5. Uh, uh, most of my computers are running 12.4, right? And I, I'm always the not the first person that hits update on this. This issue, Jacob, you want to dive into this. This issue just came up with another gentleman, um, and I'm not going to mention a name. I don't know if he's here or not. But the person was like, hey, I've got this FileMaker server. And I've also, and besides doing Pro and Go on it, I also are doing custom web publishing on it. And so I decided to run an operating system update, one, and two, uh, run an update on the FileMaker to the latest version. And shockingly of shocks, <laughs> don't work no more. Right. And so, Jacob, you want to frame that kind of conversation? I, I, it's, a, it's a fundamental. I, I will just say this fundamentally, and then I'll, I'll let Jacob color around the edges. Fundamentally, when you run a major server update, right, especially operating system and the version of FileMaker, and you run the auto update, that's even worse. It adds another layer of complexity to it. There's, a, I would say, at least a 50% chance that if you restart the computer, some essential element of your FileMaker server is no longer going to work anymore, okay? Now, if you're using Pro and Go and nothing else, yeah, mostly it's going to be okay, okay? But... Uh, <laughs> Assuming you haven't gone out of support, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our, some of our customers like to do. Yeah. Uh, so like, for example, if you're on a particular version of FileMaker Server, um, there's a, uh, they actually have it per point release now with 19 having like a 19.2 and three and four. And so each one has a support window from Claris. And that also includes a list of like OS X versions that it goes with, or the Windows Server one really hasn't changed to be honest, but just as an example, it could. Um, and so you have to be really careful that you don't like update out of support. And as always, it doesn't necessarily mean it will break, but it could. And on specifically Mac, uh, it has a much higher propensity to break if you go outside of your little support window. Um, so that's that's like you're updating it. You've kind of waited. You're kind of updating sometimes whatever, you know, on some schedule instead of like whenever Apple tells you there's a new update. Separately from that, um, in general, you want to avoid being the first person to install the operating system, a new patch of OS X, uh, whatever, um, because of that right there. Um, I My Mac is on 19.4. Uh, that seems fine. I have 19.5.2 also, same, you know, latest version of Pro. Uh, that mostly seems to work great. Um, it is, of course, bothering me to install 12.5, which is the next patch that was just released. Uh, I probably won't because uh, actually, so this person that asked is now the second person I've heard with a weird 12.5 problem. Um, a Monterey 12.5 with 19.52 Pro. Yeah. yeah, and so I had not heard about the first one, but that- there was a, There's yeah. another one in our company Slack right now. Somebody else, they can't get Pro to start correctly. It, cra it, it hangs for a while and then crashes, um, which I don't know if that's a plug-in problem, whatever. They reinstalled Pro, it, that didn't do anything. Um, With the cache, like I would fix that. That was what I asked, it has, has not been answered yet. But, um, but yeah, so it's like, it's just bizarre behavior basically. Um, and so, uh, bug in Pro, bug in OS X. Eh, I'm gonna, sh sh I'm shaking my shoulders here. Um, yes, basically, uh, there's well, some interaction there that's not going well. Okay, so. so, so let me help with another thought here for all of you. And I know most of you already kind of get this already. After you build a FileMaker solution and you get it on a server and it's running, your investment in that. And I'm going to say that because it's the whole box of the server and the clients and the solution, the FMP 12 solution. Your annual maintenance 
either in time or labor or money um, is not zero, right? It might be really close to zero if you don't run any updates, but don't expect your annual maintenance on your, I, you know, it's like I paid my FileMaker developer $30,000 or I spent 300 hours building the solution myself. It's running, everyone's happy with it, done, okay? Um, and therefore, I'm not gonna have to spend any more time on it or any more money on it. You're gonna have to keep uh, upkeep cost on it. We're back to this analogy, if Margaret could find that, I don't know where that video is at, but it was the, the penguin uh, video where the South Penguins in the South Pole, uh, they're on the ice and the ice breaks. And when that happens, if they're on the piece that's floating away, they generally after a little bit jump off and swim to the main piece of ice, right? Otherwise, it keeps drifting towards the equator and melting and melting. And before long, the penguin is 3,000 or 4,000 miles from home on a piece of ice that's now melted. It's now the penguin's in the water and it's got to swim all the way back to where it wants to go. It's not going to make it. It's going to die. And so that's you. You are the penguin. Uh, technology in general, it's not a Claris thing, not an Apple thing, not a Microsoft thing. Technology generally requires a little bit of reinvestment periodically to keep it up to date and going. That is exactly it right here. So let me bring this up. Okay. So that right there is Ruben down there. That's Ruben. And this is Ken. And there's Lynn and Labo and Scott Keen. And then Jacob and Richard way the f over here going, yo, are you sure you want to do that? I'm like, f yeah, we're going for it. We're going to drive this ice like we stole it. Uh oh, is right. Oh, sh okay. There we go. Okay, that, there he goes. Oh, we have a problem. This penguin is f***ed. <laughs> so this is perfect. That is what you should do. This is 19.4. This is 19.5. Eventually, it floats away. And this is still the one you're on. Then this becomes 19.6 and 19.7 and 19.8. And doing the little jump, it was so easy for it. But if you're 100 miles away... How easy is that going to be? Dave White, is there a way to use a 2X Mac Mini M1 running FileMaker Server 19.5 in a cluster so that if one fails and reboots, the other one takes up the slack? Okay, so we have covered this already. Um, I don't know it will. Basically, it should work just fine. But once again, you're like, if I use 19.5 with the latest version from Tim Cook, who promised me it would work, right? I don't know about that, right? So um, I'm waving my hands. But if you do a search on file, uh, we go to YouTube, and it's a live stream that we have. Uh, if you go to FileMaker, uh, enter, enterprise. Let's try a FileMaker in the enterprise. Hey, there it is. So uh, there was five days of this stuff here, right? clustering and replication that was a long long time ago about about a year and a half ago we uh did this right here so this is the summary of it right here and then there were five days of this uh wherever the other five days were at um uh, margaret if you want to find a uh, filemaker enterprise replication it should be day one day two day three day four day five so there's up oh, uh mirror sync enterprise summary mirror sync two years ago I see day three, four, and five. This video right here, this one right here is a long time ago. This is where we actually uh, sat down and did this. Um, it's streamed to a year ago. Uh, this is two years ago. Um, it was like five days. So maybe this is it. I don't know why it would be. Maybe they updated this one here a little bit with new artwork or something. I'm not sure what happened with that. That's how you do it. Problem solved. The third-party product makes it work. Okay. Yeah, he, he did not mention the guy over at 360 Works mentioned it was possible with load balancers, but that went way over my head. Well, we cover it in the video. We actually demoed all of it, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. all yeah. in there. Yeah, so what it is, it's not so much load balancing. It's um, it, what it does, it finds the closest server. So, the, so in the demo, what we did is we had a server in the West Coast, a server in the East Coast, a server in Europe, a server in Australia, and a server in India. And from from California to Mumbai, India was the worst performance ever, like 330 milliseconds. But what we did is we had a copy of starting point in each one, and then every 8 or 10 or 12 or 20 seconds, whatever it was, these 
various versions of FileMaker would, would synchronize each other so all of them had the same data. So each one was a replication of it. And then what would happen is that you log on, it finds the server that's closest to you. It's, it's an Amazon capability, and it directs you to the closest server, a closest functioning server. If a server dies, it takes note of the fact it's dead, and it redirects you to still the next closest server, which might not be that close. We did it all. Kick right? Been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Five days of uh, live stream here with us. It, is it normal that a Mac could reboot every so often about two to three weeks? It has not been used for anything other than FileMaker server with mirror sync. Well, well, what? Is it re it's rebooting itself or you're telling it to reboot? I guess would be the question. So It, uh, it wouldn't need to reboot. I, ours run for months. Yeah. If you don't it's, patch it or whatever, right? Like you're not applying an OS update or something like that. Yeah, they'll run for a very, generally a very long time. If the um, machine's restarting itself, there's a reason for that. You might want to find out why that is. Yep. Just keep in mind, once again, I, I, you know, what, what is your recommendation on Windows updates? Generally, Windows updates on Windows machines don't break FileMaker mm -hmm. installs. Not anymore. They used to. They absolutely used to. Um, we've, we've, we've updated that. So, there's a there's a needle to thread here. We still do not, under any circumstance, recommend an automatic update on Windows, um, but it's finally for a different reason. Uh, it used to be because literally the updates would break components of FileMaker and uh, you know manual install or automatic install. It didn't matter. You were likely to knock your server out on accident um, just because Microsoft patches something and then it doesn't work with FileMaker afterwards. Um, we've mostly gotten out of that. Um, I haven't, I haven't experienced that in, uh, basically since about maybe the first or second year that I worked here. So I w I'm not going to say it's a permanently solved problem, but it's a currently solved problem. Okay. However, you still have the reboot issue of FileMaker server won't necessarily shut down fast enough uh, for Windows preferences, right? It would like you to get down because we're going to go down, do the Windows update real quick and pop back up again. Um, and it, it FileMaker server doesn't necessarily disconnect everybody, close the databases, right? All that kind of close down process or some file maintenance that happens. Um, it won't do that fast enough necessarily for Windows updates or for Windows generally speaking. David White says, perfect, these two servers are on-prem. Does that make a difference? Um, no, they could be together on the network, but then you, you have a, a situation where they could, you know, you could direct people back and forth between the two of them. Um, and then if one of them goes down, you quit doing it. Um, the serve, when we dealt the demo, um, the enterprise replication demo, we did it with Amazon servers, with Amazon services. If you're doing, um, you can still use the sync to synchronize between the two of them. Um, but the, but you're going to have to find a way of redirecting the traffic appropriately, right? Makes yeah. sense. You'll either have to do manual failover or, uh, you could probably build a duct tape version of the Amazon thing since it's on your local network. Mm -hmm. that, there would be some, uh, you know, DIY involved with that. But, um, if you, if you control all the DNS on your network and everyone's wired up to it, cause you're on a domain, for example, or, you know, windows domain or something like that, um, that's an approachable task. Uh, it's not instant or free. That is not built out of the box or anything like that, but um, you could probably figure it out. It would take, it would take some doing, but um, if it's very important to the business, they can spend that money basically. Ed Burkle says, question 19.5.2, okay, on Windows 10. I don't have that config, uh, so I can't answer this, but we'll throw it out there anyway. I created an application with a bunch of keyboard shortcuts and have a first letter field to sort for sub summaries i've rebuilt this re this report several times and only the first page gets the sub summary i have other reports in different applications that work correctly i don't is this a keyboard shortcut problem or is this a sub summary is not working problem jacob do you understand this question Perhaps this, perhaps the keyboard shortcuts is extra info. We do not need for the sub summary is not working. So, so it is. So it does. So it isn't working. I'd have to see the file. Um, if they've broken something, that would be good to know about. Um, but yeah, we'd have to see the file in order to figure that out. That shouldn't be that hard to do. It's just what you, what you do is, if you get to a spot where something should be displaying and it's not displaying correctly, then you need to pause. Like stop the script or pause it or halt everything, and then 
look at it manually in preview mode or no for some summaries work should work in browse mode so look go to browse mode look at it and determine why it's not working when before it does work i mean we had this problem earlier when we we're doing this containers with the thumbnails and we basically backtracked it down to being dropbox offline virtual kind of access causing problems with FileMaker. I thought for sure I couldn't code um, about an hour and a half ago and I couldn't figure out how to make this work correctly. And then um, by having another engineer look at it and then without Dropbox involved, we figured out Dropbox was interfering with it. It was a third party interaction that was causing a problem. Uh, David White says the server reboots itself. If you have a FileMaker, correction, if you have a Macintosh Okay, I'm a Mac guy. If you have a Mac that restarts, none of my Macs restart themselves. You probably have a security setting turned on if you go to uh, updates or wherever, and okay. you probably have it always install the updates no matter what immediately without, you know, uh, install updates, install automatically. This thing is set all automatic right here, but it, uh, yeah, so it's set to automatically keep my Mac up to date. I would, uh, yours might be on. Um, this one should be off. I don't know. It's, it it looked like it was on, on, or did it turn itself on, or what that was? Hang on one second. Let me see. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, it'll reset that setting sometimes. To yeah. You yeah, because it's trying to do treadmill. that. I don't want automatically, no, 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 no. Check for updates is fine, but I don't want them auto doing that. And it, it, right now, just now, you saw it turned itself on because it wanted to go that way. This machine is a broadcast machine. If I run 10.5, there may not be any more broadcasts from this studio ever, right? So <laughs> you've got to watch out for um, well-intentioned but dubious settings in your computer. So uh, it would like to do it, but I'm not going to do it. So I'm yeah. guessing that you have this enabled, and then it restarts itself with an update. And then when that happens, here's the thing on Windows. Jacob said it. I'm going to reemphasize it again. If you tell your Mac, I'm going to get this for Macs too. If you tell any of the computers to auto run updates, and they are a FileMaker server, you're going to yourself. The reason is on Windows, Jacob, and I saw it in live person the other day. I have the logs. And what it did is the server said, oh, I'm going to run an update on itself. And the, ser and the operating system tells the FileMaker server, shut down. And the, and the FileMaker server is like, oh, oh, God, I'm not sure I really want to do that. Well, let me check with people, see if they want to log off. And then so it, it starts lollygagging. Lollygagging is an old phrase, kind of. <laughs> and what happens is I don't have my virtual gun here. But what happens is, is the operating system pulls a gun. And shoots FileMaker server pow, right in the head, dead as shit. And he, it means that your FileMaker files are have cr have been shut down improperly and are damaged, okay? Or probably are damaged, or maybe damaged. You don't really know, right? And so you don't want your operating system pulling a gun on you, and and plugging you with lead, right? So don't turn on the automatic updates because FileMaker server doesn't take a gun seriously. Uh, you know, it's it's like. Uh, it's like you're being held at the at the bank, and and the guy sitting there looking at his gun said, "Be really a fortunate shame if you didn't give me all your money." And the bank teller is like, "Hey, f you! I don't think you're going to do it." And the and the operating system will absolutely shoot your FileMaker server in the head. Period. End of story. So, yep. Don't like being shot in the head when someone pulls a gun. Do what they say. Yeah, it did it. I have the logs. Yeah, we have the evidence of the of this. That was of how we, that's how we slant. figured out like what happened. That was like, why is our file down, like randomly on a Tuesday? <laughs> yeah. And it it's like, oh, shot. yeah. And so you can see Windows update. It kicked up. It was like, oh, I'm gonna. And it did its little pre-install stuff, right? Because the new Windows update, or the current kind of generation of it, isn't. It's not quite so terrible operationally, and it'll do some of the work before it reboots. And so it did that. It kicked off the little process, and it's like, all right, it, it's reboot time. We're outside of business hours. It, you know, it picked. It just decided now was a good time to do it. Uh, FileMaker server didn't take it seriously. Nope. And it, it gave it about I don't know, forty-five seconds, a minute, or something. You know, what would be a reasonable amount of time to shut down? Give me your wallet. Give me your wallet right now. Yep, I've seen FileMaker server take five, five or more minutes to totally close everything out. 
Um, it's worth noting if people are actually connected, like you have pro users logged in actively doing stuff in the database, uh, it can take at least 90 seconds to get those people off, even if FileMaker server forces the conversation. So yeah. um, if you have anything that's in a 45, 60 second, you know, and they're like, oh, that'll be plenty of time to shut it. It's not, it's not, it's absolutely not. Um, I've seen FileMaker server, no clients take itself take five minutes to do all the file close maintenance shut everything down close everything out did it totally successfully no issues no crashes nothing five minutes okay. of waiting for it to get its stuff together so dave white had a question here so we talked about the one the other one that you could run into is the energy saver right here there's a schedule right here in energy saver where you can tell your computer to auto restart okay um by the way, as a reminder, I'm going to state this. It should be obvious, but your FileMaker server should never sleep ever. No power naps, no sleeping, no laying off the job. It should be maximum alert 24-7 at all times. Why? Because half the time when you see bug reports from Microsoft or, or Apple, half the bug reports will be like, hey, this app didn't, re didn't come back to life properly after going to sleep or after a power nap or after whatever. So don't do that. So David want to know, well, could it be the fact that his Mac is on a corporate network? Unless someone at that, I mean, where'd that machine come from? Did, did the IT people give it to you after they'd already kind of hand stroked the machine and set it up for you? In which case they might put something on there where they can forcibly tell it to restart. But if it's like a legit Mac that you just bought, a corporate network should not be able to force a restart. Unless there's also that thing where you have a power strip, right? The, the programmable power strips I have a, on a couple of our networks, remote offices. If, if the power strip can't see the network for some reason, it power cycles the power strip to reset the router. So the modem or router or whatever it is reboots to get its internet connection back, right? So... I've had people complain that it, they have a server, it's in the rack at the data center, and then out of, out of lo and behold, it restarts itself because someone told that power strip to cycle, power cycle, right? So all those things you need to think about. But strictly speaking, a Mac off the street that has not been tampered with will not respond to a remote command to restart. That would be a giant security vulnerability. All right. Other questions. Kind of an interesting topic today. We're kind of all over the place, but I, I, the biggest takeaway from all of you is that if you have questions about where Claris is going, you're confused about what they're doing, especially as they start to articulate stuff, they want to hear what you think. They don't care about me per se. They only care about me in so much as that I am the conduit from you. And if you have questions about this or that, the other thing, not about, hey, how come my mach machine didn't restart correctly? But if you, uh, I'm talking about the separate topic of direction and product lines and things like that, right? Because um, we're going to do some more demos on the Claire Studio as it's being changed and updated, and I'm going to, we'll keep reviewing it. Um, and at the point where it becomes really like awesome, then you'll see me very excited about it, right? Okay, so uh, David says his Mac was purchased separately. So yeah, so. Um, yeah, then you, yeah. I, if, if you have a Mac that automatically restarts itself randomly out of the blue, you've got a bad Mac and you haven't installed anything. Apple won't believe you. They'll think that you installed something on it, but it's, 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 it's got a, it's kernel panicking. It's doing a restart. Something's happening to that machine. Yep. That's what I was going to say is Brad. If it's totally random, two to three weeks randomly, that doesn't line up with Apple's updates. So it's yeah. probably something's panicking. Something's causing it to panic could be bad a bunch of different things that we could list here the short version is you need to get it fixed so oh on the ups battery backup in case you don't know about this um most of mine are just like sitting underneath the the counter like there's one down here it's sitting underneath down there right and so i got my light on down there it's down there but um when the batteries go bad <laughs> uh what uh apc will do on these things is they will randomly power cycle themselves just to express their displeasure with you. It's like if you have a cat and it and, and you leave it at home, you don't give it enough love and it's on your bed. Uh, true story. Um, then that's your cat's way of letting you know it's unhappy. Power supplies, battery backups will do that. If it's an older battery backup, the battery is two or three, four or five years old and it's and it can't really charge it. It's probably already got a light on the front that says, hey, or a display says the battery is trashed. Put a new battery in. And if you don't do that, I've had them get to the point where they just, 
once every week or two, they'll just right in the middle of the day, it'll it'll shut itself off. Either shuts itself off, comes back, or it shuts itself off and stays off. So just keep that in mind about the uh, battery backups. If it's an old one, just keep that in mind. Canberra says, have you ever run into issues with 19.5.2 and Ubuntu 20.04? They're both, uh, well, the 19.5.2, you understand, is brand new, right? And no, no, my personal company servers are not on it because I don't want to have nope. to suffer. And there you go, of course. I have one of those total. You have, you have one total. Yeah. So one we don't, total. we're not a date. So, once again, and there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing live on it. <laughs> so yeah. if it's we, a test server. If we were going to um, roll a new server, right? Someone said, here, Jacob Taylor, here's a million dollars. What kind of server would you roll out? What would you do? Windows Server 2019 on 19.4 if they were a conservative organization on 19.5 if there was something specific to their environment or they were excited about it etc okay. um with some fair warning there just that it's a fresh version of the software and yeah we'll see um, okay, cool. I, after 19.5.2 i haven't seen any new screaming issues so uh maybe it's fine short version but more people hey, need to use it hey david if you've got me. if you got two mac minis m1s that are doing that Okay, back up. When I took delivery of the Mac one, Mac Minis, the M1s, mine are about a year old now. When I took delivery of them, I would get the green screen of death once in a while with them. They would hang with this horrible graphics card malfunction thing. And now that you mention that, I haven't seen that probably in six or seven, eight months, a year. So they had a hardware kind of kernel panic problem with that with the m1s at least the, some of the ones i have like six of them um and they would consistently market do you remember that the green screen of death or whatever it was it yes. would, yeah have you seen that lately no i haven't seen it so i think apple patched uh that operating system or the firmware did something on it to fix that issue you might want to make sure they're i don't want to say up to date with 10.5 but i would definitely 10.2 was great. 10.3 seemed mostly great. 10.3 and 10.4 seemed mostly okay for me. That's for Dave. But yeah, so if you if you actually listen, if you're if you're not seeing the actual crash and you have no, no telemetry besides the remnants of the explosion, but if you actually watch it, the, the Mac would come in, it would be like this solid green screen. I can't remember if it would restart, it would just hang like that. It had to forcibly power cycle it. But that was an early I don't know if they patched it with firmware and operating system, but the problem's gone away, which means Apple fixed it. And, and it was initially, I thought I had a bad computer. And, and then I saw it on two computers. And I went, oh, mother, because since you have two, two, two Mac minis from different lots bought six months apart, you know, three months apart, whatever, you know, it's not the one bad machine. It's a systemic problem they have with their logic board or something. And they obviously coded around it. So I'm very happy about that. Could memory leaks... Yeah. Could memory leaks due to bad scripting practices? Um, these are file, okay, backup. So David keeps asking interesting questions. So these were two FileMaker servers, right, Dave? Right? Like that'll, Dave's on a 90 second delay. That'll cause so, a different problem. Well, it would cause, so what process runs PSOS, right? You and I were just FMSD. having a conversation. Yep. Yeah. The, the script engine on the server side script engine, basically. Sorry, Long. die. But yep. that doesn't cause the machine to restart, right? Nope. So, no. And you and if you have email notifications turned on on FileMaker Server, you'll get told if that happens, and you'll know it because what'll what you'll the email you'll get two you'll get two emails out of it probably, um, not always, but but I'll just say probably, um, the two emails will be uh, script process crashed, right? You know, because and and it'll be while that schedule was running, and you may or may not get another email that is the process, uh, the actual script schedule failed, like it exited wrong, or you know, some kind of email like that, where essentially, yeah, right, it fell over, thus it could not complete successfully. Yeah, so that's where you write a script, and FileMaker Server does it for you. If you're running Pro on the computer, and it crashes then that would stop the process but it wouldn't start a restart mm -mm. you know it's not like the old days where you crash and the whole machine restarts it's just really rare we have those problems with the m1s 
that got passed. You're right. There was an M1 problem. Of, shoot. I think this was even maybe 2021 when this problem was out. Um, yeah. 2021 when I saw this problem. It was a green screen or something like that. Boy. And then I have in it. Now that you jar the memory, I remember that. Right. But. Yeah, if you actually have a machine restarting, make sure the power supply isn't doing it. Make sure the battery backup isn't doing it. Um, make sure your IT people didn't install something that they could forcibly tell it to restart. Check the console always. I don't mean the FileMaker console. You have an app on your Mac called Console. You want to open? Can you show that at all on your computer? You have a. a uh, you on? can. You have, you have it on screen up. Yeah, but you have to guide me through it. I don't do console stuff, so. Yep. What are we doing here? Going to apps. Yep. Going down to utilities all the way down. Okay. Utilities. And and we're all going to do this. So where's the, the, yep. And then console. console. It's the same thing that you do when you want to view a log somewhere. Uh, you use this thing. You can view the logs. So yeah, pick one of those or click the start streaming over on the side. Okay. These are different. Yeah. These are different logs. So you, you have a 360 works log there. Uh -huh. Those are, those are log reports. So if you do, so click on the left side, reports, system.log, click that. Okay. This is like, so that's certain errors. Yeah, go go up to, I'm going to, oh, I can't draw on your screen, can I? Um, um, click the, it, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Click devices on the top left where it says FF broadcast machine. Nope, top left. Yep. And then click start streaming, dead center. That's the big open start area. Right here. Okay. There you go. So this is live streaming, various issues on Richard's computer, or various not issues. Um, and you can, it's, yeah, it's voluminous. Um, so uh, some of these logs are saved between reboots, um, especially the boot log and stuff like that. Um, that's, there's one of the reports somewhere you have to go track it down and find it, but. Um, They'll tell you why it restarted. Right. Uh, sometimes, yeah, you can identify what the actual issue was, or at least what the causing. Well, if know, someone takes the cord out, if it's kernel panic, right, it may not. It'll like, yeah. but what it'll tell you is it kernel panic, and you can go ah, okay. By the uh, way, watch out for janitors with vacuum cleaners. I hate to say stupid, <laughs> but uh, even in a corporate environment, we had the uh, cleaning crew come in at two in the morning and plug in a vacuum cleaner. And to the server rack. cause a voltage drop that was so they were on the same circuit as servers like a hair dryer or a microwave or something. It would cause actually a voltage drop, which would cause the computers to restart or crash or something. And it was like randomly at night, two in the morning. And then one night I was working really late. This is back in 96. And I saw this actually happen. They plugged it in. I think, oh, mother, right? And I'm like, okay. And we had to put duct tape over the plugs. Well, we're kind of at the end of the day. I'm trying to hopefully answering questions. Uh, IT gaming showed up. And of course, we're now about done for the day. So feel free to go back and watch the broadcast tomorrow. Assuming Nick is not in Colombian jail, right? Uh, Nick will be here uh, continuing the conversation about robots, robots, robots. If any of you have ongoing questions or uh, thoughts about uh, Claris Direction, product line, confusion, shenanigans, studio, connect, whatever, feel free to drop those in an email to me at supportrcconsulting.com. I got way I can raise these issues when I have face-to-face -face time with Claris. Okay. They want to hear, they want to know what you think. Okay. And uh, David says they're kernel panics. Well, they have two machines with ongoing kernel panics is really unusual. So um, yeah, two machines, unless they were from the same lot, the same manufacturing process, at the same time at Apple, boy. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right, cool. Well, that's pretty much it. So tomorrow is that. And uh, Nick, next three days, and then Friday is going to be awesome. That'll be uh, the uh, 360 Works Deploy, where we're working on a solution here in the United States, and we're deploying it to uh, Singapore, Indonesia, somewhere over there, that way. And East, we're East Timor. East Timor, okay. Yep. And the internet here between here and there sucks so bad that we can't really work on the live file, so we're working on an offline file. We press the button, and it pushes the updates to the customer, imports the data. It's super, super sweet and sexy, so you will love that. All right? All right, that's it. See you.
to uh, maybe a FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 